I am Miley, I'm Miley Fu, and here is my colleague Hong Ying Tai, and you can call him Hai Dai. So we are from an open source project called the Wasm Edge. So we are using WebAssembly on the server side instead of in the browsers. So a very quick um, slide to show you um, what what Wasm can do. So um, Wiki function is a serverless function platform uh, built on top of Wikipedia and is one of the most popular websites in the world. And um, it's um, powered by WordMatch because um, it has, um, it's uh, would the use WebAssembly as a sandbox to make his code secure and execute it in a very fast way. And by um, avoid startup delays, it significantly reduce its um, its um, uh, delays, and uh, the optimization would improve the system response responsiveness. Uh, so um, this post, um, after it's posted on Reddit, it has got over one hundred twenty thousand views in half a day. So um, I would like to show you a very simple large language app uh, for video translation. Uh, so here is a quick demo. It's a one minute demo. And uh, I think I have to exit the present. No? OK. So we built this video translation tool. We're not at the point where AI is yet helping us find bad patterns in the current source code, for example. But there are people working on that, and I'm actually very optimistic about it. I, I think we have a lot of tools to help us I'm not so much interested in the writing code. I'm much more interested in the finding bugs proactively and doing code review. なるほど。今日では絵を使ってわたしは実際にそれについてとてもらっかんてきですわたしたちにはたくさんの助けになる道具があると思いますコードを書くことにあまり興味がありませんあ uh, so this is a video we recorded at uh, open source summit and ai dev china in hong kong in august and uh, that's uh lin uh Les linus so um he talked about um uh, AI in helping code reviewing. So uh, we made a translation tool to uh, with large language model to help you uh, trans translate the text. And so, so it's three steps. So first, you would listen to the uh, the talk and uh, get the text from it, and then translate the text into another language. And the third step is to combine the text into an audio. So the later section of that video I showed you is all done by large language models. So with this tool, uh, so it's like this. You upload a video, like for example in English, and then you would, uh, yeah, you would choose the voice or language, and then you can um, enter your email address, and you will be uh, send a uh, translated or dubbed video in another language. Um, so now let's talk about a large language model in the cloud, because um, we would like to show you how um, we are running large language models uh, usually. So uh, developers and uh, enterprises would uh, uh, 
normally need to scale AI models efficiently, and um, AI workloads can be pretty uh, unpredictable because uh, if you uh, deploy a model to a customer uh, to handle customer queries, it can uh, it can uh, increase uh, a lot of. Uh, uh, the, it, it can be. Uh, it need to be scaled quickly because there might be a, um, a very strong workload and spikes, uh, like uh, for example on Black Friday or something. So um, you would need uh, to um, be able to scale, and uh, it should be able to manage and deployed by Kubernetes. And um, uh, we would also need a lot of uh, flexibilities and also performance. And uh, um, meanwhile, a lot of enterprises would um, um, be concerned about their data leaving their premises, so it's also a concern. Um, so the mainstream approaches to deploy large language model can be the following three ones. Um, so the first would be using Python to um, to deploy, and then there would be um, using native uh, runtimes like Llama CPP or VLLM, and the third one is to using WebAssembly as an abstraction layer. Um, so first, uh, Python. Um, we would uh, use LangChain to manage prompt and workflows, and use. A Llama index to process data pipelines and uh, yeah uh, to uh, for front and UI there are other tools and uh, um, it's great Python is great for research and experimentations but uh, even for Greg Brockman the um, uh, he, I think he's a man uh, he was the man who was in charge of the engineering team in OpenAI. So even for him, it's uh, kind of hard to um, get all the dependencies right. And uh, uh, so it resonates with a lot of developers. Like, for example, uh, like in China, uh, this um, video talking about uh, Rust being the language of AGI has got a lot of uh, likes. Uh, and a lot of views. You can see it's uh, 24K of, of views in a very short time. So um, he says um, Python could be your bottleneck. Neck. So the pros and cons are very clear. And uh, we would, just, uh, all right. Oh, the, na uh, the second is the native runtime. And uh, there are also pros and cons, like the natively compiled Llama CPP binary app cannot be copied from your MacBook to uh, another machine, like uh, to Linux without any modification. So the developers, you have to recompile the app for, for example, NVIDIA or another MPU and recompile and retest. So it's... Uh, so if you do um, wrong native binaries, it can be not safe, and uh, you wouldn't still need a container. So um, uh, that would involve another set of GPU complexities. And uh, we would say that um, it's uh, always a very good way to introduce another la layer of uh, abstraction. Abstraction would allow us to think about problems in a general way without getting bogged down in details. So um, that's um, the third approach, that is WebAssembly. So um, we would uh, uh, compile code into a binary format um, which, which is WebAssembly that can run on any platform and uh, it can provide a near native performance. So it's a, it's, a, uh, it's a very lightweight and portable, embeddable uh, large language runtime and uh, uh, used by cloud developers. So um, 
Lama edge is built on top of uh, the World Image Runtime. It is a set of large language model deployment and inference um, tools, and it would uh, support all these different uh, infra and uh, chips and uh, GPUs. So it, uh, after you have written your app, um, in the lang language you prefer, it can be Rust, C++, C++ or other languages supported by WebAssembly. Uh, you compile it into WebAssembly, and it can be moved around and deployed to a new hardware, and uh, then uh, also managed by Kubernetes, or uh, yeah, or uh, package the bottom app into Docker image and. Uh, Mm, then use it as an embedded AI or LLM services. So yeah, that's pretty much what's being talked about just now, um, but in Japanese. So um, yeah, so there are a few use cases. Um, so the uh, the one in the photo is that. Uh, our community developers um, be, uh, uh, build on top of uh, uh, Word Edge and Lama Edge uh, AI app to uh, translate their voice command into Python or uh, some uh, code that can be understood by the small ro robot there, that uh, robot car, and uh, then you can use your voice to uh, control the robot car. Um, it, yeah, so um, there are use cases like uh, the fourth one is uh, education. So you can um, use it to make a teaching assistant. It's already being adopted in UC Berkeley to um, teach UC Berkeley's uh, uh, computer science class. So um, yeah, um, this is another use case that is to um, is built on top of the WebAssembly tech stack. So it's uh, it's called GaiaNet. It's a, a Web three project that allows you to run your own um, AI uh, nodes. Uh, along with your knowledge base, your personal knowledge base on your own devices. It can be Mac or uh, your uh, NVIDIA device or other devices. And uh, it uh, the idea is to put that into a network to allow others to call. And uh, so right now, the uh, total nodes by far have been over uh, 200K. And the, the throughput means that the token being uh, trans, uh, transferred. Um, so I think this has already been mentioned just now. So it's just a quick summarize. So um, uh, with, um, with WebAssembly, it's self-contained and uh, very easily copied across different devices and easy to modify. And compared with native, it uh, also have these other advantages. And um, it's designed to be agoni agonistic to the underlying runtime. So you can swap out Lama CPP for a different large language model runtime, uh, such as any, uh, such as like Apple's um, MLX runtime without changing or even uh, recompiling the application. So yeah, next we will talk about the technical details behind. Okay, uh, hello everyone. I'm going to talk about you know how to uh, create a Watson container and 
deploy loads of uh, the you know services and on your cloud. So uh, the basic idea is that uh, currently, if you want to you know deploy your AI or LM workload with containers, uh, actually the traditional way is that you have to create an all-in-one uh, container images, which including that you have a basic you know Linux image layer, for example the Ubuntu, the Debian, or any uh, Linux distribution, and then you have to start to in store all of the dependency or for example you want to use you know PyTorch and uh, don't forget to install CUDA if you want to use PyTorch with CUDA with your you know NVIDIA GPU or you have to install the LCM for the uh, AMD GPU and lots of dependencies you have to need to uh, install it uh, especially if you want to use other uh, tool chain like you want to use uh, Whisper or you want to use the uh, you know the the Nama chatbot and the more dependency you have to install it. and all of that is you write down a very complicated dark image and do all of this stuff and finally finally you can finally you know uh, write your application and then put your you know very little application just into this very large uh, container and then you have the uh, output and this you know this image will be deployed to your own node. And then, uh, after you deploy it, you will have to, you know, mount lots of the different models, like uh, Whisper models, or like the Llama 3, or like the uh, Fire 3, and lots of different models to do the different agent and different workloads. So, uh, after that, then your, you know, application service is up. You can send your prompt, you send your, you know, workload to your application. That's all. So, this is the traditional way how we, uh, you know, uh, deploy uh, AI or LLM services on the cluster, and then the uh, everything is so great because that's you know only the developer who built the dark image is suffering, right? The users are very happy because hey, I have uh, you know all in one dark image and I just deploy it and bam, everything is so good. But someone is very suffering for that. And the other thing is that if you want to you know deploy lots of uh, kind of these images, you uh, will uh, have lots of redundant layers, such as the dependency, because all of the instances will have the same dependency in it. Okay, so the you know the development is very suffering, but the deployment is very happy. So we want to introduce another way, which is that we are going to provide the uh, Watson way, uh, which means that. You only need to create a very lightweight Watson container images. Uh, our, uh, I believe, largest uh, application is uh, only 16 or 20 megabytes. And if you are, you know, you are running the Whisper, you only have, you know, three megabytes, so it's pretty small. And it depends on your service. So if you create, a, you know, very strong, very large applications, uh, the the size will grow. But it's fine because you know, uh, compared with the previous one, it's pretty simple and pretty small. So, uh, basically, how to create this container image? You only have to create an empty container layer. You don't have to do any uh, add any Linux distribution on it. You don't have to uh, install any dependency on it because that uh, the Watson it already provide all of the. Uh, compatibility to use the AI workload. So all you need to do is to compile your application into the WebAssembly, and then package this WebAssembly file uh, into the container image. So that's uh, very simple, very easy. So uh, the remaining steps are almost the same. You know, you deploy this Watson container just like you deploy the traditional container, and you mount lots of different models on it, and then just interact with it. So uh, the pros is that you know all the dependencies is not packaged, and the developer will be very happy because they they don't have to install the a dependency for it. Yeah, but someone must be uh, suffering now. You know, the the pain will not disappear. They just move from the developer to somebody who operates it. So. The sovereign people now become the, the operators. They have to install all of the dependency on the node. But 
but but it will reduce the you know the disk usage. It will reduce the you know the uh, the lots of you know the cost of efforts. But someone is suffering, and that's fine because you know always have some people need to be have the pain. Then it just smoothly. Okay, so this is another way uh, we introduced. It's totally fine to work with the traditional way. So you can have your uh, cluster of uh, support both of the runtime. You can have your traditional one. You can have the uh, wasn't uh, wasn't container. So is you know is uh, they, they can uh, exist in the same cluster. So you don't need to you know create a special node or a special uh, runtime just for it. You just install some dependency on your uh, node operator. So that's all. So uh, let's see a you know a pretty uh, easy example is that uh, if you are writing your traditional container, you will run like Ubuntu 20 and then add lots of your dependencies and broad. You will write uh, uh, hundreds or thousands line of the Docker file and then you finally set up your environment. But if you go to the you know the wasn't way, you just need to straight line from scratch, uh, empty. And then add your was a file in it, and then just you know have a command to run it. So that's oh, that's very, very simple. So the difference is that uh, we just move the uh, libraries, the dependencies, and just to uh, from the inside of the container to the uh, wasn't runtime. And then of course all of the models are, are outside of the container. You, you just mount it and execute it. So here is the pen point. You know. Lots of people, they have to install lots of dependency. Yeah, I believe it's very suffer because even then us, we are trying to install lots of a stack to our customer. Uh, we, we are very painful, painful for it, and our customer also, you know, who operate it, are also be suffering from the same thing. But if you want to, you know, make your, you know, cluster to run your NVIDIA GPU, you have to lots of different steps. So first of all, you must install the NVIDIA container, uh, CLI right now, and then uh, because we are using the Watson Edge as the Watson runtime, of course you can change the Watson runtime to any uh, Watson runtime you want. For example, the Watson time or uh, WIVN or different, you know, uh, different Watson runtime if they support the same standard. So you can just switch it. You don't have to use Watson Edge. Yeah, just just the same, uh, the same layer of it. So you have to build a custom uh, version of the C run. It's an OCL runtime, uh, which support the Watson container Watson support. And then you just install these, you know, these commands, these libraries into your uh, host runner, and then you just deploy the Watson container like your traditional way. So actually, the command is totally the same. Just Docker run, or you know, uh, the the uh, Kubernetes apply your YAML, and that's all. Yeah. So if you are interested in, you know, how to suffer from the same. Part you can just click the link, and there are lots of you know manual steps you have to do it. And we are working on it because we want to you know package all of the staff into the uh, you know uh, a Kubernetes operator. So you just need to install an operator and then uh, everything's done. But uh, currently we only have several steps or several scripts to do that. Yeah. So we are working on it to fix this question. You know, just to move the pen from the upper. Uh, operation to us, yeah, just you know, <laughs> that's what they need to do. And the implementation of the uh, application program are changed. Uh, the uh, the problem is that uh, if you are using the the Python or PyTorch to uh, create your uh, service, then you will have the Python uh, file to you know describe all your uh, application business logic. And if you uh, comes to the web assembly, then uh, you can use any uh, programming language you want. For example, you can use C++, you can use Rust, you can use Golang, and you can use Kotlin, and lots of different uh, programming languages you can use. It doesn't limit the the you know the special language you, you want. So. All of that will be compiled into the uh, this binary format called WebAssembly, and 
because that some of the limitation is that WebAssembly is uh, you know binary format, so uh, it cannot call the uh, you know it cannot use the native library. So we have to you know create a new API set for it, and it basically is a language SDK uh, provided by a Rust, C++, and other language we already support it. And you you just need to include the SDK and then just you know make your workload, your AI or AI workload with the SDK, then you can use all of this capacity. Whatever your host machine is the uh, NVIDIA GPU runner, or your host machine is a MacBook, or your host machine is a Windows, that's totally fine because we already abstracted the layer, especially the, uh, you know, the, the GPU layer. Yeah. So uh, here comes a standard called the uh, was the new network is a proposal to define this new API and it will uh, be the first three soon. And I believe uh, if everything is fine, we will see it become a standard. And I believe it will be in you know next year. And then uh, all of the Watson Run High can support it. And yeah, that's good. So. Uh, we also provide lots of, you know, the different ability. If you want to do some voice to text or text group voice, you can deploy your quiz model or your uh, TTS model. And if you want to do the chat or code completion, you can deploy your, you know, Lava or Phi 3. And of course, if you want to uh, compute some gr graphics, like use the step diffusion or the flux, you can all use the same API to do it. You just need to specify the different model and different input or different prompt. You just change that. But so the remaining API are almost the same. So you don't have to worry about, oh, if I want to deploy a different kind of application, I have to rewrite my application again and again and again. No, you just need to change the model and change the prompt you used and set the input and get the output. Yeah, so it will be pretty uh, simplified and clear for the developers especially the application developers. So here is, uh, you know, a four steps example. You will have the Watson application, you see the Watson neural network, and basically you will have the load function. The load function will load all of the models with, uh, especially with the configuration. Especially if, you know, you have a cluster, you may have a, a eight, eight hundred, GPUs, you want to split your model into the different GPU, you can, of course, you can use the uh, configuration during the uh, loading phase. Yeah, so you can do lots of the configuration just like you do in the uh, traditional layer or traditional container. It's totally the same. Just move the con configuration from the, maybe the command line to the, uh, uh, to the, you know, what's an application layer. And then you will receive lots of different requests. It will be your input, so you can put the prompts into that. And then you will communicate with the models and do the computation. Especially, most of the implementation are hiding in the uh, compute function, which is if you uh, receive an OpenVINO model, we will just create an OpenVINO backend and do the uh, workload for you. If you are using the PyTorch model, of course we have the LibTorch backend, so you can you know run the, the same model. And if you have some you know GGUF model, of course we have the Lama CPP backend. So uh, almost the popular models we are already support in all of our backend. So it's totally fine, and you just uh, we just you know create these abstraction layers and to cover all of the use case and to simplify the uh, interaction between the developer and users. Okay, so let's have some live demo, and I hope that I can, you know, I can have the, sorry, maybe I need to, I need to mirror my screen, it will be better. Okay, so the first one is that, oh, I believe my network maybe now, Okay, so my left side, it should be the, uh, let me just, let me just stop it and rerun it. 
just for a second. We stop it. We stop another one. So in this demo, I will show that uh, we will use the Whisper API server first. You will send a test uh, voice to it, and basically it's uh, you know an English uh, stream that talk about oh this is uh, you know a task file for the uh, Whisper.cpp, and then we will call the you know the Llama 3.2, and it will translate the English sentence to the Japanese. So the first uh, this Docker run. So let's start the Llama server, and let's start the Whisper server. Okay, this this is just you know the the normal container, and we run the demo first. So you know it just translate. Let me just. So, so first you just you know decode your uh, voice into the sentence with the you know with the uh, time stamp, and this is a test record for whisper the CPP, and then we uh, translate it. Here is the output. Yeah. So this is you know a very short demo. If you are you know use them uh, with the uh, traditional just using. Uh, almost the, the same way to handle the you know the traditional uh, containers. Yeah, so you just change the images from the traditional container with the Watson, and the uh, user experience are almost the same. So you don't need to worry about I I have to you know uh, learning how to use them. Yeah, so so this is the uh, you know single node way to do that. And another one is that you can, of course, you can wrap it into the uh, Docker Compose file or you know Kubernetes. And I'm sorry that this is my uh, you know personal notebook, so I don't have a Kubernetes cluster on yet. So the only thing I can show you that is that I, I use the Docker Compose. Yeah, and also it's it's pretty old. It's you know GTS 1080. So. Uh, I'm afraid that I only can create, I only can deploy two services. One is the Llama, one is the Whisper. I'm sorry that I can have the TTS because the limited of the resources. But if you are running over Kubernetes or you are running with the Docker Compose, and you can find that you, you are almost the same thing. You know, you just you write your configuration, uh, use your uh, image, and then you know redirect to the port. And that's all. You can run almost the same, you know, demo script, and it will be a little bit small because that uh, I, I think I, I just made a modification of the configuration, so the GPU now is not using. So it will be a little bit small, uh, slow right now. Yeah. So basically, it's almost the same. You can deploy with the Docker Compose. Of course, you can rewrite this Docker Compose file with the you know Kubernetes YAML file, and then you know Kubernetes apply, and that's all you need to run. And of course, you can you know detect the workload and uh, define the rules how to you know scale it up. Just like you know our previous demo, that we can uh, allow users to upload their video. And you know, just decode the video into the voice, and then come uh, translate it, and then uh, append the you know the translated voice back to the original uh, videos. And if you have you know lots of the requests coming, and we, uh, this workload supposed you know auto scale up, so you can just you know uh, enjoy with the old uh, advantage that you already owned when you run the Kubernetes cluster. So that's, that's my demo now. The, so I will go back to Miley. OK. Uh, so uh, you can also have a try on any Hugging Face open source um, large language models on your own Mac or your own device by running simple commands. Um, using Llama Edge, so it's all in, all in our deck, uh, in our docs. So um, if you get it running and uh, write about it, or you mm, 
contribute to our open source project in some way, you can uh, come to us to get a free Linux uh, education voucher. Um, that's an ongoing uh, uh, project that we are doing right now. So yeah, so that's uh, the several repos that we mentioned just now. And um, yeah, uh, also we are doing a Linux Foundation mentorship programs every year, so three times a year. And each um, term we would have four mentees and you can um, uh, keep an eye on that and to see uh, if you are interested in any of our projects. Yeah, so yeah, I guess that will be it. And that's our YouTube link and uh, GitHub link, and that's our GitHub handle. So yeah, um, if you guys have any questions, I think we have two or three minutes left. Yeah, I have a I have a question on the uh, dependency management. Uh, what major approach uh, just moves the uh, dependency to the host side? So the uh, what happens if we like upgrade the dependency itself? So the do we need to uh, what about the life cycle management with the container side? What major container side? Okay, so the question is that uh, because we move the, the dependency from the uh, container side to the host side, and how difficult will it is to you know do the upgrade of these plugins? The answer is you just need to replace the uh, plugin itself. You just you know copy a file and just override it. That's all. Uh, in the container side, uh, they need to adjust the, the usage of the dependencies. So the, I think that uh, they also need to redeploy their workload. Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's that's correct because that you know uh, the reason we have this this way to update it is because that our customer they want to you know they want to stream and remove the dependency from each of the container. So they so they take the, the effort to, you know, they have to manually update it with a script. But the update is very simple, you just override it. Because we, we just move all of the, you know, the functionality become a plugin. So you just override it, that's all. Yeah. Uh, we need uh, another approach for the uh, dependency management. For the, yeah, 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 uh, yeah. Including the node, uh, for example, rubbing nodes or, uh, yes. Yeah, different node has a different uh, uh, versions of dependencies or different uh, functionalities. So the uh, yeah, but most of the you know, especially related to the uh, GPU, we yeah. have you know we have managed it. Okay. So we have a, a tool chain to do that. So uh, all we need to do is run the you know the tool chain to update it. It will also update the same dependency. Uh, or most of the dependency will be handled by our tools. Yeah. Hi, uh, my name is Ivan, I'm from Docker. Um, what um, you pointed out, so, so there is a trade-off here. So it is complicated for the user, and user need to take care of dependencies. Um, there are like a couple of problems that are happening uh, in this situation. So what happens is on the host, you wanna run different type of dependencies. You cannot install two different versions. Uh, or this will be really hard. Other problem is if company, and some t sometimes they need to do it uh, with the regulation, they need to have a clear SBOM. Like what is packed in your software? What are you using? What are dependencies? Do you have vulnerabilities? You wanna make sure that you are up to date. So the, it's adding a new problems that I think could be solved really simply with, with multi-stage builds. So. When you are building your Docker image, you could say multi-stage build and separate dependencies with your app build. And 
then if your dependencies are not changing, Docker will reuse this layer. And you will basically don't need to, your, you will have faster builds and your images will be small. So even in production, when you pull the image, only first time you will build everything. And next rebuild, you will just download the layer that is changed and that is your app. So I think multi-stage build is actually the, the, the problem. Maybe we can talk later after this, uh, how we can help you to, to improve your uh, build pipeline and simplify everything. Yes, and uh, we know that because you know we have the uh, uh, co-work with Dark Team, and like you can use the Web GPU or other resources with the Watson Runner, and I believe we have you know the multiple different way to uh, fix this problem. Yeah, so we can just talk uh, after the the, uh, the session. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much for coming to our talk.